When people get sick, they ask themselves, why me? It's a fact that diseases don't choose their target. They just strike out of nowhere. Today, you're feeling good, and the next morning the problems start. At least, that is what happens with inflammatory bowel disease, known as IBD. Inflammatory bowel disease, also called IBD, is a term for two conditions, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, that are characterized by chronic inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Ulcerative colitis causes long-lasting inflammation and ulcers in the innermost lining of the large intestine and rectum. Damaged areas are continuous, usually starting at the rectum and spreading further into the colon. Complications for ulcerative colitis include toxic megacolon, as the disease causes the colon to expand, dilate, and distend, perforated colon, and severe dehydration. Crohn's disease is characterized by inflammation of the lining of the digestive tract, which often spreads deep into affected tissues. Damaged areas appear in patches that are next to areas of healthy tissue. While ulcerative colitis only affects the colon and rectum, Crohn's, on the other hand, can affect every part of the digestive tract. Complications for Crohn's disease include bowel obstruction, thickening and narrowing the bowels, which may block the flow of digestive contents, malnutrition, ulcers, fistulas, an abnormal connection between different body parts created by ulcers, an anal fissure, a small tear in the thin, moist tissue that lines the anus. Possible complications for both include colon cancer, skin, eye, and joint inflammation, medication side effects, as certain medications for IBD are associated with a small risk of developing certain cancers, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, and other conditions, and blood clots. The exact cause of IBD is unknown, but it is the result of a defective immune system. A properly functioning immune system attacks foreign organisms, such as viruses and bacteria, to protect the body. In IBD, the immune system responds incorrectly to environmental triggers, which causes inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Although IBD can affect anyone, people with the following factors have a higher chance to be affected. Age. Most people who develop IBD are diagnosed before they're 30 years old. Race or ethnicity. IBD can occur in any race, although, if you are of specific descent, such as of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, your risk might be higher. Family history. You are at higher risk if you have a close relative with the disease. And where you live. If you live in an industrialized country, you're more likely to develop IBD. People living in northern climates also seem to be at greater risk. Symptoms may include diarrhea, abdominal pain, rectal bleeding, urgent need to move bowels, fever, loss of appetite, weight loss, and fatigue. Although there is no cure yet, several types of medications may be used to treat IBD, such as aminosalicylates, corticosteroids, such as prednisone, immunomodulators, and biologics. Diet also plays a huge role in reducing inflammation. Several vaccinations for patients with IBD are recommended to prevent infections. Severe IBD cases may require surgery to remove damaged portions of the gastrointestinal tract, sometimes leaving them with temporary or permanent colostomy or ileostomy bag. If medications don't work, a type of surgery is recommended, called proctocolectomy with ileal pouch anal anastomosis, shortly IPAA, which involves the removal of the colon and rectum, to form what is often referred to as a J-pouch. Hi everyone, my name is Angelika and I'm from Poland. I'm 25 years old and I've been sick for the last two years. To be honest, this illness didn't make such a huge impact on my social life. I still go out and see my friends because I just simply didn't allow it to change. <laughs> However, it made me much more aware of uh, how fragile our health is. 
and uh, yeah, because of that my mental health got damaged <laughs> and yeah, I became more anxious, um, more depressed and many times I, I really struggle to, to fall asleep. Uh, in the beginning, I wasn't experiencing much pain. It was more just like blood in the toilet bowl. So I went to the doctor, this was in 2010, um, and it took about two months before I got my diagnosis because at first my primary care physician thought I had a bacterial infection. So after a couple of different rounds of antibiotics, he finally sent me to a GI who diagnosed me with ulcerative colitis after a colonoscopy. When my mom would bring me to the emergency room, we were dismissed a lot. It killed my mental health. It made me feel like maybe I am being overdramatic. One doctor said that it was growing pains, but I just did not know that growing could be that painful. There's so much more to it than just the physical symptoms. Imagine having uh, anxiety and being nervous whenever you're not in your own home. You know, if I was driving or if I was tr attempting to go to work or if I was walking around a store, you know, you never knew when that urgency, that really, really urgent and painful stomach cramp would hit. You never know if you'd be able, if you'd be able to make it to the bathroom on time. Um, it was just a nightmare being outside of my own house. My lifestyle uh, has changed quite a lot as well. We all know that this journey is long and it's very difficult to distinguish what's good and what's bad for our tummy because this changes all the time and yeah, so that's why I'm still trying to discover what I can eat and what I can't. The piece of advice that I always give to patients is to be your own advocate, to learn how to ask the tough questions, because no one is going to look out for you the way you are, and to keep a sense of humor, because without it, you will lose your mind. There are some embarrassing situations and circumstances you'll find yourself in, so learn to laugh at yourself. Uh, I would like to tell each of you that you should look after your mental health because in my case the chronic stress caused the illness and yeah if you keep your mental health in shape I'm sure that it's going to be so much easier to for you to keep your physical health in shape as well. The oldest reports of IBD are thought to date from as early as ancient times where physicians reported some sort of chronic diarrhea. But, for the first time, the term ulcerative colitis was used by Sir Samuel Wilkes in 1859, describing a condition similar to today's IBD. It's also rumored that the famous French military leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, had Crohn's disease. In his portraits, he can be seen holding his hand in his coat, holding what is thought to be a colostomy bag made from a goat's bladder.